Time for sports now. I'm John Garcia Jr. Sensational sports day nationwide and right here in Syracuse. Now, So it all comes back to right here from Brinkley, the corner of Spring and Ashburn, where his past as a high school legend intersects with his future as an NFL dad. Reporting from Philadelphia, John Garcia Jr., NCC News. Most of the Lady Lasers will tell you playing in the national championship game is special enough. But for the Scalises, it was a family affair and it was about much more than just bringing home the hardware. The madness carried over into the high school ranks as well. Basketball power Jamesville DeWitt is in line for their third Section 3 Class A title in a row. Leading the Red Rams is super sophomore Dewan Coleman, who will be attending the University of, well, wherever he wants. Coach Bob McKinney. Everybody here at the Q's preparing for perhaps the biggest week in basketball history. On the ladies' side, they're hosting the number one ranked UConn Huskies who come in riding an undefeated streak going into March. On the men's side... Or, or any other sport where it's just a one-game elimination, you know, March Madness like we're heading into now, you would definitely have an amazing point. But it's just not as strong in a baseball or a basketball where you have to beat this team four times out of seven. Best of... So moments ago, Q's extends their best start in school history to 23-1. and Jim Beheim also extends his win total to 823. Free throws were the story, and with the Scoop Jardine play at the end, Jim Beheim simply said he saw Scoop with the ball, so he called timeout. Nick? Which could possibly spark more interest for the New York area and bring bigger names here in Syracuse. Reporting live at the onset, I'm John Garcia, Jr., NCC News. Famous cities like Boston, Chicago, Buffalo, and Edmonton have been the sites of outdoor classics in the National Hockey League. One step down in the AHL, it never happened. Well, until now. And that host city, right here in Syracuse. The Binghamton Senators only had to travel 66 miles up I-81, and Patterson would drop the first puck. And he said he was going for Binghamton. Not going for this guy. Parachuter slips down, but he does deliver the puck from above. First period, crunch seven minutes in. Alexander Picard scores the goal to put the crunch up 1-0. Second period, crunch still up a goal and on the power play, but Josh Hennessy off of the rebound says, look at my shorthand, shorthanded goal to tie the game up at one. Time winding down in the second, and Dan Fritchie is going to shoot. Just kidding. He drops it off to David Lifferton to put the crunch up 2-1, to one, but would that be enough? Defensive battle here, and in any defensive battle, it's going to have to be goalie play that stands the teams apart, and Kevin Lalonde was up for the task. 36 saves to earn the number one star of the game, and the crunch looked like they're going to hold on for the 2-1 win at the Outdoor Classic. Under 10 seconds remaining. Do it. The puck to the neutral zone, and I got two words for you. 21,000 packed the fairgrounds, and Alexander Picard said it had a big influence on the crunch. You know, the first 10 minutes was unbelievable. Uh, I thought I was playing a seven game in the Stanley Cup Finals, you know. Coming from the locker room and seeing like 20,000 people just screaming, and just, it was unbelievable. Now they say it's not how you start, but how you finish. But when you're the back-to-back -back defending national champions like the Syracuse men's lacrosse team, it has to be a combination of both. Cuse looking to win their opening game for the 14th straight season against the University of Denver. First period, Javon Miller wasting no time. Check his stick work, puts the Q's up 1-0 early, 41 seconds in. Then sophomore Kevin Drew out hustles the Pioneers and scores to make it 2-0 Syracuse. Later in the first with Q's up two, Cody Jamison with five Pioneers around him, doesn't matter. One, uh, one of his career high, four goals on the day, Q's up 8-2 after the first, and they would go on to win this one 15-9, not looking back against DU. Now, Orange basketball also in the national spotlight, eyeing a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. The selection committee will soon be making those decisions, and top seeds cannot have letdowns, especially against sub-500 teams. But if there's one thing Providence can do, and Jim Beheim knows this one, it's they can, they can score, scoring 82 points a game. Wes Johnson doesn't seem to mind, though. Off of his own miss, gets the rebound, slams it home. The hand's looking okay there, and Cuse is up for early. Providence at home going with the blackout, and they would start shooting lights out, especially from deep. Brian McKenzie has the, this time to uh, give the Friars their first lead of the game. Then Routens falls asleep, and Marshawn Brooks slams it home to wake him up to extend the brand new lead for Providence. But in the second half, it was all Syracuse, and it started with defense. Brandon Trish on the steal. He goes coast to coast. No need for help on that one. On their way to a 14-0 run. Then more Syracuse. The Aaron pass to nobody, and Andy Routen scoops it up for the rare dunk. Orange up 13. Then it was time for Syracuse to show off more offensive skills and featuring ball movement this time. Down low to Rick Jackson for the slam. He had 28 points, a new career high in this one. 
on the defensive cues would rise up literally West Johnson on the block starts the break Joseph dishes off to Routens and Routens stops and pops one of his eight threes on the day and the cues would go on to dominate the second half and win this one 99 85. I heard about how she had that no hitter against uh, the USA. When I heard that she was coming here, I was just like, a super awesome pitcher's coming. <laughs> kind of a LeBron James. In that case, she'd be known as Queen Tincher. Angela Tincher, a special, special pitcher against the greatest softball team in the world. She throws a seven inning no hitter. That's what Angela Tincher did on the mound while pitching at Virginia Tech and professionally. She now wears a new shade of orange and dominates the dugout as the new pitching coach That's at better. Syracuse. Yeah. Coach Lee Ross says respect with the players was already taken care of before she ever set foot on the hill. They're not going to question anything, you know, because she's been there, done that. One of the most decorated softball athletes ever, Tincher was the USA Softball Player of the Year and National Player of the Year in 2008. Even though this is Tincher's first season as a coach, it's been a smooth transition. And of course, the players don't mind having quite the catch. A lot of them are used to doing things on their own, so I can kind of step back and watch them, but they're not afraid to ask for help too, so it was a pretty easy transition. She helps me make sure I slow down and think about um, the big picture. It was really easy laid back and it was just really comfortable to work with her right away. Just in case anyone was wondering, she still can do what she does best, and it's not a bad way to help out the offense every day. That was a gift. Yeah, I've tried to share that with them a little bit, share my experiences and how I got through things and how I accomplished things. So hopefully it helps. <laughs> As for why coach really at SU? I am up here. It's definitely my favorite, favorite level that I've played at. And a little orange luck. Her boyfriend just happens to be a graduate student here. John Garcia, Jr., NCC Sports.